Hello y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, what's good? If you're new, hey boo, I'm back with another video, okay y'all? So, let me just start off this video saying, how y'all doing this Sunday morning? It's Sunday morning. I literally been up since about three or four o'clock this morning, y'all. Like I was just literally laying there, laying there, laying there. And I was supposed to be made some story times way before today, but this story time that I'm about to tell y'all, I've been kind of dreading doing this story time because I'm just gonna say before I can start the video, um, this story time is gonna be probably um trigger warning, okay? It's probably gonna be emotional. Um, this story was about how I found out my mother passed away. This story is basically about how my family was murdered, okay? And so if you don't like hearing about stuff, that, if you feel like things are going to trigger your um, emotions, um, it's going to trigger you to get upset. Uh, I'm just going to say right now, please do not watch it, okay? Because this is going to be, um, I'm, I'm going to get very graphic with this very video. Um, this video is, I told this story in the beginning when I first started my YouTube channel, but I was just laying in my bed early this morning and I was really dreading getting up this morning. Like I literally had the Lord, the Lord is here with me right now, okay? the lord at the holy bible the it's man what a coincidence it's orange and black okay so before i get into this video um i know y'all see me with my, my black and orange on and you just like oh hell my devil's colors damn demonic colors and let me just explain something to you i am a firm believer in god and i'm gonna share y'all the testimony the story of of why i am a strong believer in him let me just say first and foremost i am not a witch i do not practice voodoo um witchcraft none of that type of stuff i am not into any of that okay I am a woman that love fashion. I like dressing up. I love hair. I love makeup. I love all of it. So since it's Halloween, I want to come with Halloween colors on. This, ever since I was a little girl, I always like, my grandmother, she never let us celebrate Halloween. She always said that it was the devil's holiday, okay? And so I never really had too much of, I didn't really have too much of a childhood, really. You know, um, I think she didn't let us celebrate Halloween. I think I made a winter retreat maybe one time out of my whole entire childhood. But me celebrating Halloween, this is me kind of just reliving my childhood all over again. The things that I didn't get a chance to do, I'm doing it with y'all on YouTube. Okay, so this is this is fun for me. It's it's no um evil, it's no evil intent behind none of my videos. Um, y'all see that I got an orange and black candle on the back. I really love fashion. I mean, I really love um interior design, interior decorating. That's my passion. Okay. Because I got I to come on here and explain because I get on here and I talk about God a lot. And so I don't want to give off the wrong message to people. To where they think I'm coming on here trying to be a devil worshiper. Because really, I'm really not. Okay, my Bible thump is getting in, the, getting in the comments. Okay, I got my Bible right I got my spiritual protection right here. There's no evilness that could come up against me in this video, okay? And I pray to the Lord, to God. Anything evil sent up against you, you rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ, okay? So as I'm sitting on, sitting on this camera with orange and black on, and I probably look like a witch to you. I'm going to say first and foremost, baby, I am not a witch. I, I am a believer in God, okay? That's why I got this Bible right here, my spiritual protection, because I'm going to need it for this video. Um, This story about my mother and my family being murdered, it is extremely... <sighs> I had to tell this story again um, face to face with y'all because when I first when I first started my channel talking about it, I was thrown then, but... I feel like me talking to y'all face to face is me kind of getting my strength with it and me helping somebody that's probably been through the same situation as me. If you have lost a mother or a family to gun violence, then this video is for you, okay? The Lord got you here Sunday morning for a reason, okay? We're going to praise God on Halloween <laughs> over here on my channel, okay? I got the whole Halloween aesthetic in the background, but that's, that's literally an image, okay? That is not... I love decorating, and that's the reason why I got all of this in the background, okay? Because the next video that I'm going to give y'all is going to be a story time about how I, how I um, encountered a witch. Then you want to stay tuned for that video because my spiritual discernment, I'm going to be giving a lot of tips in that video that you guys need to pay attention to, especially around this time. Halloween is very close, so the devil is at an all-time high right now, okay? It's people, that, it's, it's people that celebrate Halloween like Christmas here, okay? I'm, I live in Wisconsin. The, the capacity for witchcraft is very high here. That's why I got my body right now. And I'm going to get on here and tell y'all, literally, this story about my family's murder, 
this was a nightmare to me. That's, that's, that's why I felt like this would be the perfect time for me to come back and, and share the story with y'all again. Because I know in all my videos, I've been saying, oh, my mother, you know, my mother is gone. She, and you're probably thinking, like, well, what happened to your mother? And I'm going to tell you. Um, I'm going to ask the Lord. I already asked the Lord this morning, like, when I was literally laying in bed, yeah. Let me just say, first and foremost, this video is probably going to be very long. I had to do it this morning because I needed my peace and quiet. Um, for people who may not know, I do have children. So my children are asleep right now. So I feel like this is a perfect time for me to record. Um, it wouldn't have been no other time that I, I would have been able to do this video. So I'm choosing to do it right now. So um, go get your Bibles, okay? Get whatever kind of candle that you need for your spiritual protection, okay? Um, let me just explain the candles that I got in the background. I got those from Dollar Tree. Now it's a black and orange candle. And when you think of black and orange, you think, okay, Halloween colors. But to me... Orange represents energy, okay? You know how they tell you eat oranges. You know you get that vitamin D. It gives you energy. That's what I think of orange. Orange is very vibrant. I love bright colors. As y'all already know, I'm a bright person. I really love colors. Um, and black, to me, they try to say black is like evil and it's devil, okay? It does, it does represent those type of things. But to me, I'm going to use it in a positive sense. We bring in positive energy around Halloween, okay? We ain't going to let the devil get up in here today, okay? We're going to have the Lord. We invite the Lord up in here, okay? The Lord know what I'm trying to do, okay? So, yeah, don't don't get him Mr. Screwed, okay? This girl over here believes in God all the way through and through. So, black to me represents sophistication. Black to me represents um mystery, must be being mysterious, you know? Um, mystery, mysterious, um, sophistication. Um, I think black represents class as well, okay? So, let me just say that. <laughs> And before I even get into my video, for the people who um, watch my last talk about I did my little makeup in the beginning, I don't know if that's something that y'all like or something that y'all want to um, see more of on my channel, but just let me just just let me know in the comments if that's something that you want to see more of, like my makeup routine and stuff like that. So um, I went for the black and orange look today with my nails. Um, a lip, I kind of want to show y'all, um, before I even get into this video, I'm not going to do too much of a makeup thing. I'm just gonna show y'all the look that I went for for the ladies who want to achieve this look. Um, they want to do a different look for their videos, or they want something, you know, um, for Halloween. Now, for my lip, I, I got an orange lip, and so I use the Maybelline New York Vivid Matte Liquid Color. Okay, and so this is how it looks. Very, very orange. Okay, and then for my eye, I did kind of like a smoky black eye. And I used the um, She Glam. And the color that I used was, of course, black, okay? So I used the Stormy one. And I used a little bit of Future um, future You in like the crease of my eye, okay? So for the ladies who want to check that look, that, that was the colors that I went for today. So, before I even get into this video, y'all, yeah, um, like I said, just kind of backtracking to what I said when I was when I was laying in my bed this morning. Um, I wanted to make this video yesterday, but I was just I was so busy and caught up in my energy was just drained yesterday. I I didn't want to do nothing. I I seen a lot of people posting things, going to these parties and stuff like that. And I just I don't know. I just wasn't really feeling it. I think um, my grandmother not really letting us celebrate Halloween just kind of like stayed on me throughout my life to where Halloween is not really. Um, a grand holiday to really celebrate it's not like christmas it's not like easter it's not like thanksgiving to me it's just another day but um i was literally just laying the eggs in the lord like at like three or four o'clock this morning i was just like i don't want to tell this story i did not want to have to tell this story to y'all again um it's just like I just feel like I have to come show y'all because if I'm, I'm coming on here to talk about God, then I need to speak about him. I need to show y'all how real he is, how he has so much anointing on my life, um, how he has got me through this. Okay. This testimony and the story that I'm about to tell y'all is going to be a clear example of how real he is, um, how he will show up and show out in your life, how he will remove all the problems from your life. Anything that you're going through, any trials, tribulations, he is always going to be there for you to get you through that. OK, so I'm going to get right into the story. I'm not going to really ponder because like literally. <laughs> Lord, just please, I'm just always asking the Lord to just give me the strength to do this. Like, please give me the strength to talk about this. Um, if I get a little emotional, just excuse me for that. Um, 
I feel like I got the strength to do this. I'm just going to ask the Lord to just hold my hand like he's been doing. And I'm just going to get started. So this this was like literally the worst nightmare I could have ever experienced. Like this this is way worse than any Michael Myers movie, Freddy Krueger movie, any type of horror movie that you could ever watch. Like this was literally a nightmare that I, a nightmare that I encountered. So it all started, um, Okay, so I never forget. I had got a call. I, I remember I was up this morning when I got this call. I can't really remember what I was doing, but I was just up. And I got a call from my sister around, I got a call from my sister like around three or four o'clock in the morning. And you know, somebody called you that really like, if somebody calls you at three or four o'clock like in the morning, a lot of times it's not to give you no good news, okay? It's it's always something that's going on when somebody calling you the wee hours in the morning. So but I pick up the phone, not really thinking that anything was wrong, you know? And so oh Lord, please give me the strength to talk to these people. Um my sister was on the other lane and when I picked up, I'm like, hello. Like she was she was real distraught. Um she was crying and she was just telling me like like I never fit. Like I obviously did my makeup for a reason. Like I, I wanted to use my makeup as a reason to keep me from not crying. But if I get emotional, like please y'all, just just excuse me, okay? But I pick up the phone and she like um she like hey she like you know she crying. And I'm like what's going on? And she was like um she was like oh, I'm trying to use I'm gonna use some names for for this story. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to use my brother's real name, okay? She on the phone with me, crying. And I picked up, I'm like, hello. She was like, she was like, she was like, our brother named me James. We call him J-Rod. She was like, James, James shot everybody in the house. James shot everybody in the house. Um, He, he shot mama. He shot Kishé. He, he shot, um, he shot mama. He shot Kishé. He shot, um, Popo. He shot everybody. And I'm just like, like literally, like I'm trying to process it. Like I'm literally feeling like I'm in a bad dream, y'all. Like when I got this call, it was it was the worst call I could ever get. And I'm just like, wait, you know, I'm trying to stop her because she's just talking real fast. I'm like, what you mean? I'm thinking it's a sick joke, you know? But then at the same time, I'm thinking like, why would my sister call and play with me like this? You know, I already told you that me and my sister play with each other all the time. But my sister, I know she she wasn't playing with me. Like, she was real serious. And I just kept telling her, I'm like, what you mean? What you mean? She was like, J-Rock shot everybody in the house. He shot everybody. And then she just, I'm like, what you mean? Like, I, I was so delusional. Like, I just, I was in so, dis, I was in so much of disbelief that I couldn't even process what she was saying. And so, I feel like she was getting frustrated, you know, so she just hung up the phone. And so, I called back again and one of her friends answered. And I'm like, what's going on? You know, she was like, she was like, your brother shot everybody in the house. And so, so basically, this murder took place in Chicago at my sister's home, okay? And my sister watching this video, like, I really love you, sis. Like, you are so, my sister is so strong. That's why I get on here and brag about her in a lot of my videos. Like, she is, she just don't know. She inspired me so much. Like, I get a lot of my strength from her as well. Like, she is so strong. I love my sister so much. Um, I hope that the Lord give us both the peace and strength through this video if she is watching this video. Um, so, the murder took place at her house. And when I got the phone with my sister, I mean, actually, when I got off the phone with her friend, I was still kind of like trying to process everything. I was in disbelief. And um, first person I called was my uncle. The last story time I told y'all about the stalker, my auntie that I told y'all I stayed with, um, at this time I didn't have a car. You know, this was, I was 20 at this time. I lost my family. Um, so I called my uncle. And I'm like, uh, it's like I need to, I need to ride to my sister's house right now. I need to get to my sister's house right now. And um, you know how somebody be sleep and they just be in the middle of the sleep, so they ain't really processing what you're saying. They like, you know how somebody wake up like, hello, uh, I need to ride to my sister's house. What? Uh, you know, still can't fall asleep on the phone. He he not understanding what I'm saying, so I'm getting frustrated. So I hang up the phone on him. You know, I told him, I told him, I was like, I need to get to my sister's house. I just heard something bad happen. You know. I didn't really say so I thought I need to get to my sister's house right now. You know, I need you to come get me and take me to my sister's house. Um, 
part of me didn't want to believe that my sister, what my sister told me on the phone about what our brother did. Now, this was our brother that did this. Our blood brother. Okay, there's seven of us. And so the person that murdered my family was my brother. Okay. So I get off the phone with my uncle and I call. I think I did a story time about this girl before. Um, my foster sister. Okay, I did. I think I did a story time about her before. I call her, and I was like, I need, I need a ride to my sister's house right now. Like literally, I was, I was, I was getting angry because I wanted to get to this house because part of me didn't. I, I at first I didn't believe it. You know, I didn't believe it. I'm like. But this ain't right. This this something ain't right with this. You know, something ain't true about this. Like it, it just seemed like it was like literally something from a nightmare, like a horror movie. Yeah, I, it was like it was almost as if I was in a a nightmare that I couldn't wake up from. That's that's what this moment felt like. And so when I called my sister and I told her, like literally, I was calling hours and hours. Like my sister called me with the bad news at about three or four in the morning, and I was literally calling people to about like six or seven in the morning. And when I called my sister, I was like, "Sister, come get me right now. I need to get to my sister's house right now. I need to get there right now." And I just got to tell her. I was like, "My sister just called and told me that my brother just shot and killed everybody in the house, and so I need to get there right now." And she was like, "Uh huh." And she was on the phone with me. I never forget this. She was on the phone with me. Uh huh. I need my Bible, please, Lord. Um, she was on the phone with me. She like, I was like, I, I just kept saying, I was like, I need to get to the house now. Please come get me right now. And she was like, she was like, sis, you don't want to go over there. She was like, you do not want to go over there. And I'm like, what you mean? I was like, what you mean? I need to get to my sister's house right now. What are you talking about? She was like, you can't, you don't want to go over there. I'm like, I'm like, what you mean? She was like, she was like, it's your take everywhere. And so, my guess was that she said it on the news. Um, basically, what happened was, I'm just, I'm just gonna count this. This story gonna be long, y'all. So please, have patience with me. Um, okay, so one of my nieces was in the house. Okay, so this, this is how, this is how the scenario went. When my sister called and said that my mother and everybody got shot in the house. I'm like, what? I'm like, I just talked to my mother like a week or two ago. Um, the story time where I talked about um, how to cope with your mother's death, I said in there, I was like, um, my mother will always do pop-up visits on me. So my mother would never tell me when she was coming to visit, you know, she would just show up. And so I literally, I remember talking to my mother like a couple of weeks before um, all of this. And she had told me, she was like, I was like, mama, because me and my, uh, my children's father had moved into this big house together. And I wanted my mother to come help me decorate and stuff like that. She kept saying, I'm gonna come visit you, I'm gonna come see you. I'm like, Mama, you need to come see me now. Like, I wanna see you. And so I knew she was gonna come because my mother always just pop up at the Ravens Tamp. Like, after I had my daughter, she wasn't there when I gave birth to her, but she showed up like literally like a few days later at my doorstep knocking. And I didn't even know that she was coming, you know. So I already knew that my mom was gonna pop up and surprise me at some point. And so um I, I when my sister told me that she was in the house, I was just thinking like my mom ain't in that house. Like I just talked to my mom a couple of weeks ago. She said she was coming to, to see us. And it was just it was just too much for me, y'all. And so let me just fast forward back to um uh, how this all happened. So after I talked to my sister, I had gag. Oh my god. I remember getting on Facebook and um because I, I I I didn't believe none of this shit. I did not want to believe any of this was real. So I needed all type of confirmation from other people before I believed it. Um I remember getting on Facebook. I remember getting on Facebook and seeing um one of my niece's friends, my niece, my niece's name was Quiche, okay. And so, um, she was 16 and pregnant at the time. She was murdered. And so, I was Facebook friends with her and a few of her friends. And so, when I got this bad news from my sister, I called. No, I got on Facebook and I messaged her friend. I was like, where's Keisha at? You know, I was just, I'm like, what, what is going on? And her friend said, i never forget this. Like, I live to like... I still got that message in my Facebook inbox right now. Like, she's like, Keisha is gone. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, no, this can't be real. Like, this cannot be happening. This can't be happening. 
and everything after that just was like a blur like everything just started happening so quick y'all like it was like quick and then slow at the same time like everything was happening so fast but the process was like of everything was just like a slow pain like it was like everything was in slow motion and i just remember um uh, talking to my sister keisha um let me let me just let me just tell y'all everything happy so He's giving me the strength right now. So, my mother and my family was living was living here in Wisconsin at the time he's happy. My brother was the one that drove them to Chicago, to my sister's house. And, boy. Um, so they went to my sister's house. It was my mother, my nephew, my brother, his fiance. They had a six month old at the time, okay? His fiance was pregnant at the time. Um, my nephew was with them too. One of my oldest nephews. Two of my nephews. My oldest nephew and my youngest nephew. They was all riding in the car together. My brother was the person that drove them. And so they got to my sister house. Um This, this is gonna be a lot, y'all. But I really, I gotta tell this story because this is my testimony of how real God is and how, how um, this is where my spiritual gift come from. Um, I, I gotta do this story. I have to. Lord, please. Um, so basically, what happened was. I'm not going to drag this story for too long because, like I said, I had to do this story time today because I just, I was laying in my bed, y'all, literally dread doing this story. I did not want to tell this story to y'all, but the Lord spoke to me. I was literally laying in my bed, not doing nothing. The Lord spoke to me and said, get up and go tell your story. I already gave you the strength to get through it. So go share your story about how real I am. Okay, so I'm just, just Lord, please give me this strength. Um, so basically what happened was my brother shot everybody in their sleep, you know. Um, he waited till about maybe two or three o'clock in the morning and just went from room to room shooting everybody. He shot everybody in the head. Um, my mother was in the living room of my sister's house. I had been to my sister's house plenty of times, so I remember how I looked at everything. My mother was asleep on the couch in the living room. My nephew and my nieces was in their room. And then my sister had a back room. And my, my niece, Keisha, and my other niece, Kalisha, she was three years old when she was murdered as well. They were both sleeping in the room together. And my sister had a roommate that lived in the basement at the time. Okay, so this house was full of people. Uh, my fi the, my brother's fiance and their six month old son was sleeping in my sister's room. My sister had went to a friend's house. My sister always opened her home to people. You know, she always been that type of person. She's very welcoming. You know, um, she always been the one to open her home to people. And it was nowhere for her to sleep, really. So she went to a friend's home and she let my brother's fiance and the son sleep in her room. And so, Basically, this horrific, horrendous event took place like in a week. I was in the morning. Um, my niece was the one that ran to get help. And um, I just wish my family could be here to tell the story with me. <sighs> because I know the Lord been giving us all strength to get through this. Um, my niece said that she tried to, um, my niece said that she seen my brother walking from room to room. Shooting everybody, okay. She said the um the gunshot sound like books dropping like like she said she kept hearing it over and over and over again and she said at first she didn't know what it was and she noticed it was gunshots. Um she said she seen she seen them walking from room to room and she said 
somehow she said he walked past her like literally the lord was protecting my niece literally um it was almost as if he was on he was on a tangent like he was just he snapped out like it was like that's why it's come on here and tell y'all that the devil is real the demons are real demons are extremely real okay the demon took my family out okay even though it was my brother that the demon used to do that it was nothing but the devil and the demon they made him do it okay so my niece Said that she went to go try to wake my mother up because my mother was in the living room. Now, look, I'm gonna give y'all a layout of my sister's place. So, the front door is right by the living room, okay? So, she went to go wake my mother up. Now, my, my mama, my mother is a deep sleeper, okay? When my mama sleeps, she sleep like she gone, she can't go dead to the world, okay? She is knocked out, like, literally, it's nothing they can wake up my mother. Like, I literally wish that she would have woke up in this moment, like, she could have been saved, but. My, my niece said she had to get out of there because she didn't want to be next. And so my, my niece headed towards the front door to leave out the door. Um, no. My, my niece said that my brother turned and sent her trying to wake our mother up. And that's when he ran after her. You know, she ran out the front door. Um, I remember my sister had like a glass door and a wooden door. So I don't know if the door was closed and locked at this time. But it probably would have took her to get out of this door. And so like I told y'all, like, it's a nightmare. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um. She said she running out the front door and like I told y'all before, I had been to my sister's house plenty of times and um, I'm not going to really give my sister's address away, but uh, the street that she stayed on, it was like a really long block, okay? So you got to walk a nice little minute to get to my sister's house, but my niece was running like she was trying to get away from my brother. My brother, she said my brother was chasing her, you know? Um, this block was like, like super, super long. And it take a minute for you to get to a busy street. Okay, so imagine running at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. She said she barely even had any clothes on, you know. So she running like this literally was something from a horror movie. Like the way she was describing it. Like I'll never forget. Like my niece is so strong. She said my brother chased her down the street like an animal. Like he had the gun at her like shooting at her and everything. Like, And he missed. Like I said, the Lord was protecting her that entire time she was running. He was protecting her in that house when he walked past her. And he was protecting her when she was running down that street and shooting at her. And she so happened to make it to the busy street, you know. And on this, on this, um, okay, so my sister, okay, so the house is close by a busy street. So when you get to the busy street, it's like um, a gas station right there, you know. And so she said she ran to this gas station to um, get help. And after that, um, after that, I believe my brother was trying to run and had or something like that um that was when i was told that my sister had got the bad news about what our brother had did um my niece said she called the mom she, my, my niece said she called my sister and said um uncle killed everybody uncle shot everybody in the house and everything and i remember my sister just calling me and just She didn't even say nothing. Like, it was like the trembling in her voice. Like, I never heard my sister dad hurt me upset in my life. Um, after all of that, everything just was kind of just happening so quick. I remember um, linking up with my sister and we was going to go to the house. And let's well, just get started. So I'm in the car with my sister and we get to the house where it happened and the minute we pulled up in front of the house, she got it was yellow tape everywhere. It was like literally something from a horror movie and it was just like something from a movie y'all like I'm telling you like this was this was like literally the worst nightmare. And I just wanted to wake up from it. I'm like, why is this, this nightmare just keeps steady going? Like, but I'm woke. I'm like living a nightmare right now. I just wanted it to stop. And we was in front of the house and like yellow tape all outside at the door. It was like police is everywhere. Uh, like the minute me and my sister stepped out the car, it was like, it was like news crew and cameras and stuff everywhere. Like people had microphones in our face and 
all of that and I was just upset and I was kind of angry at that point because it was like it was like they didn't give us our privacy like we was going through something so traumatic <laughs> They didn't respect our privacy at all. They was just trying to get a big story. Like, you know how the celebrities be trying to dodge the paparazzi? Like, that's literally how me and my sister was. Like, when we opened that car door, them news crew just swarmed in on us like a whole bunch of bees and just swarmed in on us like a pack of flags. I'm just like, I don't have no type of respect at all. Like, we literally just lost our family like less than a few hours ago. And y'all want to come up to us asking us questions. Like, why? Why ain't y'all got no respect for us like this? Like, people not going, that's why I said in another video, like, when people not going through what you're going through, they not gonna care. It was like, they knew this was just a big tutorial to them, they just needed to report, or, you know, they get paid, that ain't news stories. It's so, it's just like, it was so unreal. It was so unreal. And I remember I was dodging like this one police, uh, this one news reporter, like he kept following me with the microphone. I was just walking away. Uh, my sister, they called me with the bad news. Not my sister. Okay, so. <sighs> my sister, they called me with the bad news. She had came all the way from Wisconsin, you know, after getting this bad news. My sister whose house they was at. Those were her children. Those were her children being killed. My nieces, those were her two daughters. And my nephew, uh, remember I told you my niece and nephew that was in the same room? Um, he, shot me, he shot my nephew as well. Um, my nephew was alive during his head. Um, my nephew was rushed to the hospital. Um, Everything was just happening so fast, y'all. I remember. Um, oh my God. I remember my cousin, the story time I told y'all about the one that died from COVID. Um, she had, the one that had stepped in as a mother after I lost my uh, mother and my grandmother. She was living in Wisconsin at the same time when she had came down as well. Like, um, I had ended up going with her somehow. Um, my sister had so many people around her, like, um, Man, I love you, sis. You just don't know I really love you. Um, my sister had so many people to talk to, and so I went with my cousin at this time, and my cousin was consoling me through this whole thing. Um, like I said, everything was happening so fast, and so um, I remember. Okay, I remember going straight to the hospital to see my mother after this happened, you know, before me and my sister even went to see the house together, okay? I had went to the hospital. My cousin had came and got me and took me to the hospital where she was. And, um, oh my God, y'all, yeah, like, I remember we went to the IC unit. They had, um, they had an intensive care unit. And I remember when I walked in that room, and I seen my mother laying there. When my cousin came and she was about to take me to the hospital, that's when everything just was real for me. You know, because when you hear stuff like this, it's like you be in disbelief. You go, you go through a long period of denial with stuff like this. Um, I just didn't want to believe that my mother was in the hospital for, for anything like this. Um, when I walked in the room, I seen my mother in the bed. And My mother was just like her whole head was wrapped up in gauze. And she was just unrecognizable. Like, like she literally looked like something. Like she looked like one of those. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny because I'm talking about my mother right now. But her head was wrapped up like a mummy. Like my mother just looked at unrecognizable. Like that did not look like my mom. That did not look like my mother. And um. I just stood there and just like, I just broke down immediately. And I remember my cousin running over to me and consoling me during that time and everything else was just kind of like, everything was just still happening. Like, I'm just like, man, when is this ever gonna be over? Like, this is like the worst day of my life. It's like literally the worst day, like a nightmare. And 
And then, remember I told y'all my nephew was in the house too. He had got shot. Um, my two nieces that I told y'all was sleeping together. Uh, my my 16 year old niece and uh, my three year old. My niece, my 16 year old niece was pregnant at the same. When he shot them, they died instantly. Like, he was almost said they, they, didn't, they didn't know what hit them. Like, you know. Um, my nephew was like, was spared through all of this. Um, he was in another unit of the hospital. So I went from seeing my mother, and then after that, I went to see my nephew. Um, and then after that, I remember me and my cousin walking out of the hospital, and then that's when I seen my sister, and then we went to the house together, you know, to see the house. Um, I just remember just walking over to my sister and just saying, I never seen my sister so hurt. Like, oh my God. When I come on here and talk about family, don't trust family. When I'm saying I don't trust family, that's, that's what I mean. Um, our own brother was the one that did this to us. Like, and she just looked it so hurt. Like she looked like she was betrayed. And like just the look of betrayal, the look of hurt, like disbelief, all of that. And it was like my sister was so strong. Like I seen her cry and break down, but it was like she was just so strong. Like I never know what it's like to lose a child. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to know what that feeling is like, but she is so strong. <laughs> Y'all, just thank you for your patience this far, but I had to finish this story. Um, after all that, going to the house and stuff, um, I, I seen everything on the news, and I think, no. Okay, y'all, if it seemed like the video keep on pausing, like, I'm just trying to get my composure with this. Um, so, basically... Um, I went I went back in the car because I didn't want to go with my sister to I didn't feel the bodies. And so I'm sitting in the car and um I'll never forget, like I remember a couple of my um nieces' friends had came too. And one of my nieces friends just came running, like bursting out of the doors of the work. And She screamed so loud, y'all. Like that, that voice, that echoed through my head. Like she just screamed like a blood curdling kind of scream. Like and she yelled my niece's name so loud. I just heard all that hurt in that girl voice. Like. I was not gonna be able to go in there. I, I could not handle it. And um, after that whole ordeal, um, I just remember the visits back and forth to the hospital with my mother during this time. My mother was on life support. Um, she was in a coma. Um, basically, my mother was like. My mother was a fighter. Like, she was literally fighting through this whole thing. Like, my mother had been through so many life and death experiences. That's why I knew I thought she was going to make it through that bullet. I had no doubt in my mind that I was going to lose my brother. My mother, like, that wasn't even a thought in my head. Like, my, my mother was here right now to tell y'all. She would always be the one to tell us that. She used to always tell us this. And my sister, she would tell y'all too. Um, my, my mother used to always say, well, remember I told y'all I was seven of us. And, um. So um, my mother was like, I'm going to outlive all of y'all. Like, I'm going to live longer than all of y'all. And so just this moment, this very moment, I just heard a voice in my head just saying, like, I'm going to outlive all of y'all. And so when this happened, like, I didn't have no doubt in my mind that my mother wasn't going to make it through that, through that bullet, okay? And when I say this way, like, I was, I basically lived in a hospital room with my mother. I never left. Like, from the moment it happened, I was in, I, it was like the Lord was giving me the strength right then and there. I needed to be in that room with my mother. Like that's why that's why I always come on here and talk about having a spiritual gift and stuff like that. Like you have to be extremely strong person in order to receive that spiritual gift from the Lord. Because when it comes to trials and tribulations, like traumatic things that happen to you in your life, 
you need God to get you through that. You need that spiritual protection. You need a spiritual gift to be able to get you through that. That's the only thing. God is the only person that's going to get you through anything that happened in your life. And that's why I come on here and talk about him so much, so strongly. Like, I'm not only a capping, I'm not only here trying to get no likes, no subscribers, not trying to get no uh, attention from nobody. Like, I literally want to come on here and testify to y'all about how real God is, how he has showed up and showed out in my life so many times. Like, the Lord has been protecting me like this since I was a child. Like, he's been on my side since I was a child. I have been through so much, like so many traumatic experiences. Like this is probably the worst one. But he's always giving me that strength and that protection to just get through it. He was holding my hand when I was in that hospital room with my mother. Like just withstanding all of that, just dealing with all of that. Like I really need him. And um, I remember talking to the nurses and just like the nurses, the doctor basically told us that um, the doctors basically told us that our mother was going to be a vegetable. Um, she was going to need a ton of physical therapy. Um, she was going to be like a baby. You know, like a vegetable is kind of like a baby, you know. How you come in this world is how you leave this world. You know, you see how you know how you see all these elderly people. Um, when they go in the hospital, they got to be cared for and look after like a newborn baby. Like this. My mother, it wasn't, it wasn't no doubt in my mind that I, I don't know to I. I knew I was going to take care of my mother. Like, I wasn't thinking, you know, my mother going to pass away. Like, I was saying, I'm not going to take care of my mother. Like, she going to get through this. She ain't been through so much in her life. You know, she going to make it through this bullet. Like, I was just like, I was preparing my home for her to come, for her to come live with me so that I can take care of her and nurse her back to health and all of that. Like, I was talking to my mother every day. Like, my mother was a Michael Jackson fan. She loved Michael Jackson. And I just played Michael Jackson part every day. I was there visiting her and just talking to her, just telling her just, just to not leave us. And then we need her. Um, I was just like, and I remember um, just asking one of the nurses one day. Uh, it was real late at night. I think I had spent the night there with my mother. During this whole ordeal, my, my kid's father, like, the one thing I can say about him is that he was, he was by my side. Like, like he knew I was going through it. Like, he was taking days off of work just to be home with our daughter. He, he was by my side. He, he knew that it was a lot for me. And I was up at the hospital with my mother. And uh, I remember asking one of the nurses, I'm like, so how is she doing? Like, is she okay? Like, is she doing better? And stuff like that. And me, my, I'm 20, you know, I'm still kind of learning things, learning my feelings, um, just kind of a little naive and just kind of, I'm knowing what's going on, but I'm kind of naive to the whole situation. Like, I'm literally thinking that my mom finna just leave up out of here any second, you know? But all the nurses kept telling me was that she just kept telling me she's like, she's extremely sick, like she's very sick. And, you know, I worked in the hospital and so, um, doctors and nurses, they can't really tell you. They Doctors and nurses know when a person is not going to make it, you know. But they can't share their bad news with us because that would be going against the hospital policy. They can get in trouble for that. So she couldn't tell me this this nurse, this nurse knew my mother was dead. And I just felt like she just didn't want to give me false hope. So she just kept telling me she was sick. And she just kept saying she was sick. And I was angry at that nurse. I'm like, what you talking about? My mom ain't sick. Like, my mom getting up out of here. Like, she leaving. Like, she's not going to stay up in here. And I'm like, my mom, why you keep saying she's sick? She's not sick and then the nurses kept on saying like she's straight he's sick i just remember i was sitting in that room with her and i remember the room just smelled like death like when i told y'all i worked in the hospital i know when a person is dead because literally i seen it myself i sat there and watched my mother dad and uh, at the time i was 20 i didn't know but now when i'm sitting in the room with her i literally i smelled death like I smell all my mother's bodily odors just leaving her. Like, it was like her body was just decomposing it. It was like she was just trying to hold on. I could tell that my mother was trying to hold on as much as she could. Like, she was in a coma for about two weeks before she passed on. And she was fighting so hard, y'all. Like, it's like my mother knew what happened to her. Like, uh, Nurses and doctors stayed going in that room, giving doctors orders and stuff. I think that maybe my mother overheard what happened to her, and maybe she just couldn't take it. I don't know what my mother was thinking at the moment, but I feel like she knew what happened. I think she just thought like my son. I 
can't believe he did this to me. And I just think that just really just took her out of there. Like, she, I just think that she just didn't want us to see her suffering like that. Like, even though she was fighting so hard, like she just looked at, she was just, she was just holding on home so hard. She just couldn't do me. And in that moment, like, when I told y'all my mother did drugs and stuff, it was just like, my mother had, it what made me so angry was, my mother had got totally clean from drugs, like, right before she was murdered. Yeah, I was just so angry with my brother because he was like, she was doing so good. Like, she was clean. She wasn't doing drugs, no more. everything. It just seemed like when everything go good and you like, everything turned around. Just like, the devil just hit you with a ton of bricks. Like, just, I'm so proud of her before she passed away. It really hurt. She left like I was angry for a minute because it was like remember I told y'all that my grandmother raised me. You know, all of us would split up. I told y'all I was seven months. Me and my brothers and sisters, we didn't grow up in the same household together. We would split up. And so her mother was just kinda like in and out of our life. And I was angry with her for a minute because I just felt like she left a kid. But I, I, could, I couldn't stay angry with my mother. I wasn't, I was just angry at that moment because she said that she wouldn't leave. Like she said she was going to outlive all of us. <laughs> and, uh, after all of that, I'm just going to keep the story going. I'm just getting ready to get this over with. Um, I just feel like me telling my story is just going to help people just kind of go through the same situation. Like, I really thought I was going to be able to do this video without crying, but I'm just like, man, like, the Lord is so real. Like, I never would have thought that I would have been strong enough to get on here and tell y'all my story like this. Um, the Lord is real. The Lord was holding my head to that, like, you know, I was, was going to need him to that because I feel like he was the only person I had left. Um, just... The whole ordeal was just like my sister, like, oh man, y'all. Yeah. I wonder if I should come back with a second part. Am I supposed to be able to do it? Like, I can do it. I don't finish the story. Uh, I just, man, y'all. Yeah. After, after all of that, after the nurse told me that she was real sick, I think I, I, think I had went home that night or the early the next morning. I remember this vividly. I went home after I had remember talking to my mother that night. I, I remember, you know how you went in the hospital room and they got the uh, the boards in a room when they when they're, what when doctors come, and nurses come in and write certain orders and medications that the patient may need and stuff like that. And so I remember writing on the board a poem like I was half I was heavily into poetry at this moment. Like I I, I love poetry. Like I may start doing poetry again. Yeah, like this uh, I wrote a poem on the. Uh, Dr. Moore, and that was a poem that I ended up using on uh, uh, obituary, but funeral. But uh, I remember my head went home, and right when I had went home, we was in community. Me and my sister was me and my sister was together a lot during that. We was apart, but then we was together. You know, we would break apart and then somehow just found our way back to each other. You know, because I really wanted to be there for my sister. Like I knew she was just dealing with a lot. You know, just it, the whole ordeal, y'all. Like if I just go like word from word like into detail everything that i can remember because i got some photographic memory like i can remember stuff from a decade like almost like 20 years ago like i can remember stuff very, very well but after the whole ordeal i remember um my cousin during this time let me just i forgot to say this um i made a story time about um how to handle death and planning I remember during this time, y'all, um, why I say it's important for you to turn your phone off during this time because, like, literally, y'all, right when I got to bed, it was, like, after everything, like, seeing everything on the news, and my phone, like, was ringing nonstop, y'all, like, literally, my phone did not catch a break. I remember vividly the kind of phones I had and everything, like, don't y'all remember them flip, um, phones, them, um, Samsung phones we had back in the day? I think I remember my head red. It was either red or purple. It was one of them, like, my phone was blowing up, like, my phone was off the like so many people was calling me like I just I I, I got so tired of talking on the phone like I, I just turned it off after a while I think this was around the time uh I talked about it I talked in my fake friends video about um, how 
that's when I found out who my real friends was. Like, my friends didn't even come and check on me. Like, they was steady calling and stuff like that. But they just wasn't supportive. Like, the way I felt like they should have been is my friends. Like, y'all supposed to be my bitches, you know. Where is y'all at? I just told y'all I just lost my mother, you know. Um, I'm just like, man, I, I didn't want them. I didn't, I didn't want to talk to nobody at this time. When I say my phone's ringing on that stop, like, back to back to back to back to back. Like, literally, I just, it was too much for me. Um, but I think around this time, I had, uh, turned my phone on. So I can't remember what happened, but I was in communication with the, me and my sister was in communication with the doctors and stuff like that. And so I remember, um, the next day when I had left, remember I told y'all, the nurse told me she was sick, then I went home the next day. Like, literally, y'all, like, it was almost there. My mama knew it was her time, like, as soon as I got home, I didn't even make it home. The doctors was calling me and my sister to come back up to the hospital, and that's when I knew she was gone. That's when I knew she was gone. I just knew it. I felt it, like, man. Uh, me and my sister and went back, man, man. Uh, we went back to the hospital, and the doctor pulled us off to um, this room, and I went in and sat down. Me and my sister was sitting at each other. And the doctor said, uh, the doctor just cleared her brain dead. And like I said, she was in the coma, like she was on life support. And he was like, oh my God. The doctor said we need to pull the plug. Like there was literally nothing else they could do. We tried all they could. There was nothing else they could do. She was like brain dead. And like, dang, like, why? I just, when he said she was brain dead, like, I ran out of that room. I just, I didn't want to hear no more. I remember I was on the floor, like, literally bawling, crying in the hospital hallway. <laughs> My sister was still in there talking to the doctor. And, uh, I remember some people that walked past me. They was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I was like, man, my mom is cold. She cold. <laughs> After the doctor's left, um, they basically told us that they was going to do a test on her, you know, they do a vital test to basically de declare the person dead and stuff like that. And they was like, I remember the doctor's head, this this instrument in the head. It was like, this is the worst pain in the world. Like, because we didn't want to believe, I, I believe, I didn't want to believe she was gone. You know, I believe that she still had hope because the Lord made work miracles. In the last moments, and so I was thinking, like, just do a last test on us in front of us, just so we know for sure that she really is gone. And he was like, This instrument, he had to say, He was like, This is the worst pain in the world. It's like, if she don't budge and she don't move, then that means that she is dead. Yeah, like, Mom, move, please move. Like, I wanted my mother to move so bad. I did not want to believe my mom was gone. I did not want to, I did, I couldn't do it. I was not ready to let her go. Like, that doctor got to put that instrument on her finger and she did not budge. I just remember saying, like, mama, please move, please move, mama, please move. But she did not budge. I'm like, oh my God, she gone. I remember my, my father was in the room at this time, so I'm like, I was angry. Like, he tried to come over and console me and I told him, I was like, don't touch me. Like, I, I just remember being angry, like, it was the worst day. Um, after that, the doctor just basically told us that um, we can have a few moments, you know, last moments with her before they take her away. And so me and my sister, they had her hooked up to some type of body heater or something like that. And I think that's what made me believe that she was still, you know, kind of laughing. But she had warmed her body. You know, when you pass away, your body shut down, you know, temperature you become very cold. And she was still kind of warm. So my naive 20 year old self thinking that she still got a chance. Like, they was literally just keeping her there. Like, she was already dead, basically, y'all. Like, um, before she went, completely brain dead she was she was still she still had was clinging on to like when i say my mother was still laughing she was um she was coherent she could hear everything you know she just couldn't talk or anything um i remember my mama kind of moving her hand a little bit you know and so um
So I remember um, me and my sister was just kind of like in a room with her. We was having my last moments and I remember that, I remember calling a couple of my family members and telling them, I think I called, I, I called my kid's father and told her that she was gone. I just, I remember screaming through the phone. Like I was just so hurt, y'all. Um, me and my sister was standing by this window in, in a room, we was in a room with our mother. Um, I, uh, my other sister that I told y'all about the call and gave me bad news. She had went back home or something. Like, it was it was too much for her too. But me and my uh, older sister was looking out this this room. We was looking out this window in this hospital room. And remember when I told y'all? Uh, I think I shared the testimony about the angel the the angel I met in human form. I said there is something about death that changes the weather. You know, um, it's almost as if the world is not the same when you lose somebody. You know. Um, it was so cloudy outside. Like it was like the, the skies were just so gray. Like they just it literally looked like something from a horror movie. Like it was just like a dream that just kept on dragging out. You know how somebody just in pain and they just dragging it out and dragging it out, dragging it out. You know, when somebody I ain't never been experienced no um I ain't never had no experience where I came in contact with a killer, but it's almost in a sense where um uh, Somebody trying to kill you, they try to take you out, and you just kind of dragging out the pain. Like, you just feel like you're being dragged and dragged and dragged and dragged. And that's what the moment felt like. Like, when I was in the hospital room, like, that pain was just undescribable, yeah. Like, this nightmare just kept going on. Like, lo losing a mother is like losing a piece of yourself. And so, you know, you come in your, come into the world, you have your mother in. Y'all share the same DNA, so it's it's kind of it's kind of weird to describe it, but it's like when you lose your mother, it's like you literally lose a piece of yourself in a physical sense. Like I was literally feeling like my heart was being ripped out of my chest. Yeah, like the pain was just so unbearable. Lord, please wake me up from this nightmare. Like, and um, after that, we said things, said a few words with our mother. One thing I can say about um us and our mother like we don't have the we didn't have the normal um mother daughter we, we had that mother daughter relationship with each other but our mother was more so like our best friend and anything so we just sitting there talking to her like i remember my sister was sitting there talking to her um just I don't like before before my before they came to clear our mother dead and stuff like that she was talking to her mother like she was one of our best friends like she was like our girl and she was just like mom you finna get up out of this bed like girl what is you doing like girl you finna get up out of this bed <laughs> she was like you was strong and stuff my sister just had so much in in it just her strength inspired me to have strength because i seen her being so strong it's like i can't i can't be weak in this moment like my sister is lost to her doors and her son is like right down the hall from us like, like i said my nephew he got shot in the neck you know he was in the same hospital our mother was in and so like that my sister sit up and she got all this she just lost her daughters and she got a son that just suffered something traumatic as well and she just still sit up here talking to her mother like as if nothing happened like the strength that i seen that's how i knew the lord was real like my sister is a firm believer in god as well like i knew the, the lord was real when i see the strength that my sister had during this moment like i do not know what it's like to lose a child like i'm not trying to experience that but the lord will give you strength in the moments when you least expect him to that's why i tell y'all to believe in him it's very real don't let nobody come on here and try to make you go against God or try to lead you down the path of darkness. You know that's that's why I'm coming on, coming here making this video on Halloween because it's gonna be it's gonna be so much evilness going on tomorrow and today. So it's so if I feel like I gotta keep you for here, here as long as I can to talk about God, and I gotta tell you something traumatic that happened to me in order for for you to believe in Him. Then I'm gonna do that. I don't care if I gotta get on here and cry and make some of my makeup or it's not running down my nose, all that type of stuff. I, I done grabbed the ugly crap so many times. Like literally, I told y'all this this happened 11 years ago. My family was murdered April 14th of 2010. I done grabbed all the crabs I did. The Lord then, you know how you fall and hurt yourself and you skin your knee really bad and it's like a big open wound. It's like I told y'all I had to cope with the loss of a loved one. My channel is mostly dedicated to coping with the loss of a loved one because death happens every day. Somebody lose their mother every day will love me. So my channel 
is here for a purpose. The Lord wanted me to come bring this video to y'all. You know, talking about my mother and my family's murder in a way to pass threat on to you. You know, um, maybe you may be strong enough to tell your story. Maybe you may be strong enough to believe in God and feel like he's going to get you through that. Because when people go through death, they go through people turn into drugs, alcohol, weed, all of that type of stuff, you know. But you got to trust the Lord. The Lord got to be your strength. The Lord got to be your therapy. We, we were told that we had to go to therapy after this whole thing. We were, I have not been to therapy about my family's murder, my mother's murder, yeah. Me making this video to y'all, this may be a little, like I said, take what you need, leave what you don't, but eventually you are going to deal with death one day. One day, if don't nothing happen to you, you are going to lose your mother. And I want you to be able to remember my video and come back to my video and it give you strength. The Lord wanted me to make this video so that I can be able to give y'all strength to deal with this time when this time comes because this time is going to come. And so the worst thing I feel like the worst thing that could have happened to us happened to us. And I feel like the Lord would never put more on you than you can bear. He knew that this was a traumatic thing that happened to us. But he knew that we was going to be strong enough to get through it because of our faith and belief in him. He knew that we was going to be strong enough to handle this. And so that's why I like to come past my strength to other people. And... I know I'm going to hear crying and stuff like that, but it's just like, I feel so strong. Like, I am not as toe up from flow up as I used to be back then. Like, literally, I couldn't get through up to a sentence how about this story without breaking down crying in front of somebody or just, so I used to drink a lot. Like, I used to drink a lot, y'all. After my, after my mother passed away, I drank a lot. A whole lot. I don't even drink anymore. I drink every blue moon, like every occasion, even when I do drink. I t I'll take a sip. It's like I don't even want it. You know how you go on the cleans, like these people, they be vegan and stuff. Well, people, they go on the clean lifestyle, you know, they eat clean. But then they have a slip up and eat some meat. And then they just can't eat it all and they get sick. That's how I feel with um, drinking. I don't even have the urge to, to pick up a drink anymore at all. But... <sighs> The story is never ending, y'all. That is not the end. Like, literally, I ain't got through part of it. I remember what the whole ordeal was. My back hurt so bad, y'all. Um, the whole ordeal, like, after everything. During this whole time of our, pet, our mother's passing, going back and forth to the hospital, check on her and my nephew. My sister was planning um, her daughter's funerals, and so this was a huge ordeal, y'all, like, just huge. Um, I would get, get on here and go deep in depth and just kind of like just, because I feel like, I feel like, y'all my subscribers, I feel like y'all are my friends, and so I kind of want to share some of my personal experiences with y'all feel like I'm connecting with somebody in some way. Like somebody out here lost their mother before. Somebody has lost a family to gun violence. Um, it's just people out here that just went through the same thing and they just don't have that strength. Um, they don't know who to talk to. This this was literally eating me up on the inside, y'all. Like this, this, this story right here that I'm telling y'all right now, this is what inspired me to make my channel. I think I seen the video of, um, it was titled, um, story time my mother was murdered or something like that and, and the lady got on there to tell her story about how she lost her mother and that inspired me to make my video it's been almost a year now that i've been on youtube and i'm just kind of like just thanking god for giving me the strength to even make a channel to even come talk about this like man just thank you lord like and i just probably like girl finish the story but i just want to give y'all the strength like i, I, I really want y'all I, I hope it's a lot of people on my channel that believe in god like really I'm not coming on here capping about nothing. Like, hey, I know you just sitting here thinking, like, girl, your brother did that? Like, literally, y'all yeah, brother. That's that's what made the whole ordeal so painful. Like, it wasn't the. <sighs> My sister was so hurt. Like, she just said, like, like I know she had so many questions in her head. Like, and. She was talking to so many people. Like, she was getting, I told y'all, I was getting all the phone calls. Just imagine how many phone calls my sister was getting. Like, she seen calls from policemen, so doctors, nurses, so coroner's office. She's getting 
calls from detectives, just everybody. Like it was so many people that was reaching out to. It was so many people that was reaching out to my sister during this time, and um, she had people from uh, different organizations that was helping plan for these funerals. And I just, I just want to bring something up where I say, um, when it comes to the whole friend work, like. Don't put a whole st a strong emphasis on the friend word because people will literally show you who they are during your times of despair. Like when you really going through it, you down and out. That's when you gonna know who your real friends are. So this this one like one young lady, I wanna break up. Like that's how to, that's why when I come in, and I talk about the devil. It ain't in no way to scare y'all because I will come in and tell y'all like I have seen the devil so many times. So many times, that's why I come and tell y'all that he is real. But I have also seen God so many times, you know? God overrides, overrides the devil any day. There's no way the devil can have control over me. There was no way I was going to let this story go untold. Keeping this story to myself and not sharing it, opening up about it, that was eating me up from the inside out, you know? I knew that I needed to talk about this in order to be at peace with the situation, in order to heal, you know? Um, it's, it's gonna be a second part to this job because this, this can kind of rain me long, and I don't want to keep y'all for too long. But um, thank y'all for listening. Um, hopefully you got something from this video. Hopefully you got some strength. Um, hopefully you don't get out here tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna make a story example about the the witch. Y'all need to stay tuned for that. Like that story is deep. And then when you come listen to my talk, you be like, she is so deep. Like like I'm one of those deep people. Like. I'm, I'm a very deep person. Like, I have a lot of deep, deep things to talk about. And so, um, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. And, um, thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for listening to me. I really appreciate all my subscribers. Like, when I say y'all, like, when I first started my channel, I don't know. I remember I had 11 subscribers. And I was just thinking, like, man, is this really for me? Like, when I started off, I'm like, man, you know, I just, I just came on here talking about my family's murder just as a way to get, get it up out of me. But I never would have thought that it would have branched off to be something. Like now I have 166 subscribers and people just really come look forward to watching my videos. You know, that's what I think. You know, I hope that y'all just, you know, really getting some from my videos and y'all really rock with me. I really appreciate y'all. I really do. And thank you for watching and I will talk to y'all next time.